Hi guys, how are we doing? Welcome back to the Free Amers podcast, uh, joined by a very special guest. We've only actually had two people on twice. This is the second. Uh, unfortunately, no video, but we've got him on audio. We're joined by Jack Sullivan. How are we doing, Jack? You all right? I'm good. How are you guys? Very good. Very Thanks good. very much for coming on, mate. You couldn't have picked a better week after getting smashed 4-0, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's our second birthday, Jack, and it, it's really great to have you on, mate. Um was you there on Sunday, mate, to watch the game? I take it you was. Yeah, of course, of course. We go through every game. Or I think I missed two games last year and the boss missed none. So it's really, really important we go through every game. But it's one of those games where you wish you wasn't, but we were. Mm. So what, what, I think, did, I, 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 on, what, what did you make of the game overall? Well, I think it was one of those things where you've seen a potential... Um, Winning, winning the league side. Firstly, I think that's important to say. Mm. I think the players they brought in, um, Lukaku obviously gets twenty goals, more than twenty goals a season. Uh, Matic, who's a top top player in my book, I know some Chelsea fans, and and they they weren't too unhappy to see him go. But whenever I've seen him at Chelsea, he's just a stopper. Mm. And it may be saying Man United were missing last year. They've also brought in a centre half. Um, I just think maybe they need a left back, but I think even without a left back, I think they've got such strength and depth. Oh, yeah. They bring on Martial, um, whoever else they brought on, but it's like their bench was was so so strong, and mm. and that's what you need. You need strength and depth to win the title, and Mourinho's done it time and time again, and and I think it was it was one of those things. However, the game was all going quite well until we really let a sloppy first goal in, I'd say. Just got dispossessed, a bit sloppy, but I hope it's just pre-season and it's just a bit rusty. Yeah, um, we was missing some big players as well. Yeah. Like, Mikel was missing, Lanzini was missing. Yeah, if I'm Kiarte. looking to find some positives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Kiarte, Kiarte's missing. Oh, and shit, yeah. And when, when you miss um, those three as well, and two of them are very, very creative players, uh, I think, I, but however, I think we always knew it was going to be hard. Then we conceded the second once again, a bit sloppy, maybe. I, I don't know, but hope. But I think at the same time, when you play Man United, you do concede sloppy goals because they are just so good. They make goals seem better, um, easier than what they are. And then when you go to two in midfield, which Declan Rice actually did well when he came on. When you go two mm. in midfield. Billich is chasing for the game and you're either going to go one way or you're going to go the other. And and sadly, on this occasion, we went the other. Yeah, it wasn't a great day. Um, obviously, you can't you can't really read too much into the first game of the season. You don't want to get ahead of yourself and start judging, you know, an entire, oh, what's going to happen based on one game, especially when it is obviously a really tough first game away at Old Trafford. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it, it wasn't pretty. Uh, it really wasn't. It wasn't nice to see, especially, I think, after seeing uh, the Chelsea game and like seeing that these top top teams can have the game taken to them, um, I don't know. I think that that made it a little bit worse as well. It'd be very interesting to see. We were talking on the podcast um, last week about you know sort of realistic targets for the first four games, and uh, we were sort of saying six points. I think would be a realistic target. Um, in my opinion, I know it's never easy playing against the teams that just come up, but in my opinion, they're the games that we have to be aiming to win. So I think, you know, if we get wins against Newcastle and Huddersfield, which won't be easy because obviously they've got a lot to fight for, um, I think we'll be on a decent enough track there. I think that'll be all right. I think if we if we don't, I think that's when the fans will probably start to really start worrying. Yeah, no, I, I think one of the most important things with that is it won't be the fans just worrying. and but However, we are fans, but we'll be worrying as well. Mm. Like The last thing we want to see is us lose 4-0 to, to Man United. Um, obviously, yeah, it wasn't ideal on Saturday, but yeah, I think I think six points is, is very realistic. Mm. I personally think we could get more. Um, if we don't get six points from those games, I would personally be disappointed in mm. that. Absolutely. Uh, maybe. Agree. Maybe I'm thinking we're better than what we are, but I think six points, two wins out of those. If you really want to be where we want to be, you've got to go get six points out of those games. Absolutely. Those are the games you've got to go and win. Mm. 
Uh, you've still touched on it already, uh, Jack. Last thing on the Man United game, I've got to have big, big praise for Declan Rice. Some of the passing stats that have come out, he didn't give the ball away once. He looks really composed, real, real good youngster. I think we've got there this season. Yeah, no. Um, I spoke to Billich on Friday. I went in over the West Ham ladies asking for a few things, but I went in and, and we had a general chit chat and. Um, and yeah, no, one of the massive things it, that came really clear and, and over pre-season as well, how good Declan Rice is. Um, I think you've got to thank the academy, you've got to thank Terry Wesley and everyone like that because our youth system has been producing better than what it has. Mm. It's been a shame that um, the chances haven't always been be- uh, haven't always been there for them, but hopefully this year if, if we can be... Um, it may, uh, if we can be like comfortable, well, then you may see a bit more extravagance in uh, who comes off the bench, who's picked. Mm. Last year, it's a very, very toxic atmosphere to, to bring someone into when, when you're fighting relegation as, oh, a, agree, agree. as a young boy. Um, and obviously, um, the pressure's on as well for not only the manager, but for the board, but for everyone. And, and it's, it's a very, very hard atmosphere. Mm. Um, but hopefully we're better this year and, and he gets to be a bit more extravagant. You've seen with the likes of Everton, when you are, um, like, in uh, when you're eighth or something, you can try different things and, and, and they had quite a few plays this year and obviously that's what we all want and, and hopefully Declan Rice um, can, can uh, Oxbury Toxer can play as well in Germany, which would be massive. Yeah, I definitely. Think massive. Hopefully, if he gets a season under his belt in Germany, I could give him such experience. And hopefully, Cullen and Burke and Cullen started both games. Burke started uh, the I last think game. The first one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so hopefully, um, they can hold on to their positions because that's what it's all about. That's the whole point in the loan. There's mm. no point of going on loan if they're not going to play. That's right. Um, no, I was really, really impressed with the Declan Rice comments. Actually, one of the pundits actually did compare him to a young Michael Carrick, and if there's any praise, that that that's big praise to be called the young Michael Carrick. Big pressure as well. I'm not sure. I, I don't like it when they when they make comparisons like <laughs> no, this. No. You know what I mean? It puts. Uh, I don't yeah. know. I remember when Reece Oxford played against Arsenal, and and you wonder like when they said he had Ozil in his pocket and everything like that. I think maybe sometimes you just need to let them get on with it and, and no, that's see right. where they can go themselves. But yeah, no, obviously great compliments and, and the most important thing is did have a fantastic game and, and the more we see him, the the better it is because we are the Academy of Football and it's it's important that we try and um, try and prove that and, and that's why we made the changes a few years ago and, and hopefully you'll start to see it pay off. Mm. Yeah, and definitely. Uh, maybe some Tony Martinez as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, that sort of leads into a little bit to the transfers, actually. Um, there's rumours that apparently there's no more strikers coming in. Um, is that sort of because we fancy Tony Martinez a bit? Obviously, you can't go too much into detail. Uh, I think, yeah, it's Tony obviously had a good pre-season and he's a lovely kid as well. Um, but, yeah, no, the manager made it clear that he didn't want too many strikers and he was happy with those three. And obviously, Arnautovic can play there at push. Antonio can, um, AU can, all at a push as well. So you've got three strikers and hopefully with Gary Lewin, you've got Tony Martinez as well. And, and hopefully um, Tony can get a chance against uh, Cheltenham or yeah, or um, someone like that. And, and we can we can see, I think you can see he's got an eye for goal. I speak to Terry and, and you can see that they all really, really rate um, Tony and, and he's clearly got an eye for goal. Um, and and goal scorers are priceless, and and if he gets goals, then he's a very very valuable asset to the squad. Mm. Um, yeah, with transfers, um, obviously, really really successful so far, and it's got to be a big big thank you and a credit to your dad for the work that he has put in in terms of arts and ins. Um, also, a big credit, Jack, and I'm going to ask this: Is it purpose that you've been a lot more quieter this year in terms of Twitter activity, etc.? Uh, yeah, I thought I thought to myself, um, possibly last year was a bit a bit of a mess. I'd, I'll be honest, um, and the, the 
we were hopeful and then it didn't it didn't work out and I thought instead of building fan expe- expectation and now that I've become older and I've got more of a serious role at the club I, I'm I thought it was probably better that mm. I take my foot off the gas a little bit I still did the odd um, Hernandez tweet and and I had the good time with those and with dad in the sombrero and everything like that <laughs> um but I thought to myself like there's no massive, massive benefit to this anymore. And, and I've got a, a nice role at the club now mm. and everything like that. And I obviously know that lots of people at the club are a lot better now since I've done my um, apprenticeship there. And I just thought, you know what? I'll take my foot off the gas a little bit. It's not leave it. I, mm. I've called it semi-retirement. Um, <laughs> uh, but... Um, yeah, I, th- I think uh, yeah. I think I think it was a good a good move, Jack. Um, and I think it's something that a, m- the majority of West Ham fans as well would appreciate. Um, like you say, I think the, the the whole social media thing you can really get caught up in it quite easily. And I think maybe last season, like you say, maybe it was a bit much, and it did build up a lot of fan expectations. Whereas this summer, it's there hasn't been as much. Um, you know, it's it's pretty much been right. There, there may be a rumour a few days before and then we've got it, bam, we're signing this player and it's done. And mm-hmm. and it's I think I think everyone seemed to have been a lot happier with that. Do you know what I mean? Um I it's I think it's a it's a much better way of doing things and like, I I think a lot of fans will, will agree that's definitely the way to go. But fair play to you, mate, for, for realising that yourself and, and taking that step back. Yeah, no, I, I've always said and I've always thought like I don't want anything to harm the club and I don't think I ever have harmed the club. Um, I watched your interview with X and I thought that was the only question I would have asked X because um, I do think sometimes it can build fan expectation. Mm. Um, yeah, that, that, yeah, we we wanted to ask X that sort of thing, like, do you feel he's arming the club? And he, he said he doesn't think he is. Yeah, I, I, I don't think he's ever, and I don't, and I've never done it either. I don't think I've ever stopped a player from coming. I don't think I've ever done anything like that. However, I do feel that fan expectation does rise. Mm. Maybe not on his part because he's not official. Mm. But pos- And I'm not official either, but possibly people see me as more of an official source. Mm. So, um, so yeah, and I just thought, you know what? I don't need the grief. People mm. telling me this, people telling me that. And, and obviously now I know everyone a lot better at the club and... Um, I've got a new exciting role at the club, and I thought I'd use my Twitter more for that yeah. than um, than to do uh, tweets, but to do other kinds of tweets. And obviously, I'm getting older as well. Mm. Um, and it's one of those things where it's like I'm semi-retired. <laughs> I've noticed as well. Sorry, Luke. I've, I've noticed yeah. as well. Just just to touch on that last last thing, really. Um, a, a lot of the the in the nose. Uh, seem to have been far, far quieter as well this summer. Is that something that the club's done purposefully? Have you tried to sort of cut down on the leaks of things that have been getting out, information that has been getting out from the club? Um, it's a real challenging one, that, because I, I 100% agree with you. I think maybe self-consciously we have, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, uh, I think we've all tried to run a much tighter ship, but at the same time, I think when you speak to X and he said it on the interview, the insider used to give him quite a lot of mm. um, ideas and and uh, and and like used to he used to be able to read the insider and then work a few things out and put two and two together. And I think stopping things like that has, has helped as well. Mm. Um, and possibly because no, I understand, agree with you, but we have. Um, we have been much tighter and, and I think it's paid off. Yeah, I agree, mate. I agree. I, I, agree. I totally agree, yeah. It gives us... People a... say we're like on the board side now, but I totally agree. No, the it's... way it's been done this year is so much better. Yeah, it's been a lot better. I think it's given a much more professional air to the club as well. Like We've had a lot less to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> it probably ain't done the YouTube as many favours, but no, I think from the club's point of view, yeah, definitely it's come across... It's come across a lot better at business this summer. Obviously, as well, we have done some fantastic business and signed some really, really good players as well, which obviously helps. Yeah, that that that's a massive help. I think what we struggled with last year was we ate, we aimed for the stars and 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 we we struggled to to get there. Um, and I think 
when all that happens, then it's different. It's like it was dad's um, and everyone's first time at really, really trying to get these top, top, top players. And um, and when you've moved from Upton Park to Olympic Stadium, no one really knows what it's going to be like. I think it's one of those things where now it's settled in. Hmm. People can see what they're coming into a little bit. Um, I think the market was also mad last year. It's even madder this year, yeah. but everyone's adjusted to it a little bit. Um, yeah. And it, it is even madder this year. Like some of the fees, some of the wages, it is all... Yeah, I think I think to get an Anders to get yeah. an Anders for the money that you got an Anders for is incredible because, like you say, the the inflation of the market. He probably could have gone for about twenty five, thirty mil. Of yeah, no, I think it's start. one of those things where the because people always forget the players' wages a little bit, mm. and obviously his wages are are quite because he was on by Leverkusen, and but it was it would he was the target that, that we wanted for for a long time. And uh, and it was nice to get him, and and I think even at Man United, even though you didn't see much of him, his his movement is so good, mm. and he's such an intelligent footballer. Oh, yeah. I don't think he lost, I don't think he lost the ball once. He either got kicked down, which happened about six times, or he found a sensible pass. Mm. So um, so I think I think that was. That was I just love his sense. passion as well. I love his passion to win. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you could see he was getting frustrated at, at mm. Man United a little bit, and. I think we have brought in four very, very passionate players. I think see Zabaleta, mm. he was proper getting stuck in and I think yeah. he will become over the season a real fan favourite because cause he doesn't mind putting his head on the line. The word that we use on this channel quite a lot that we lacked last year definitely was a leader and you've got, yeah. in my opinion, four good leaders there and winners is a good word as yeah, well. Yeah, no, I, that's what I said. I said in the, in the, the uh, on the ride home, I, I said, look, you've, You've brought in four people that are not used to losing, and they mm. will not accept losing. Yeah, and it, I think something like that can can uh, can really change the mindset of the whole yeah. team. Um, and I I don't think our, our players like losing. But don't get me wrong. However, when you've been at Man City, you and you've been at Bayer Leverkusen trying to get Champions League football, and Man City trying to win the thing, you're very very much used to. This is not good enough. Mm -hmm. Let's change it. Yeah. Definitely, 100%. Um, in terms of transfers, I know you've been very, very quiet and you've said you've semi-retired. Uh, can we expect any more uh, without obviously revealing no names? Oh, how do you do this to me? Um, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, well, you're we obviously... You're not going to want me back. You're not going to want me back after, after We obviously really want the one obviously floating around. I know you can't talk too much about it but we obviously want William Carvalho to come in we, we all want him here if he, if it cut, if you can pull it off it would be incredible absolutely incredible signing top player yeah no I, I, he, is, he is a good player it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, very, it's, a, it's a Redknapp response hey Zary Redknapp he's like oh yeah terrific player yeah but he's he's, he's draw, not one of our draw. players yeah top draw <laughs> terrific player but if we can pull off Ronaldo you'd all be ecstatic yeah well. this is true yeah <laughs> he's, uh, he's yeah, he's a top player, and obviously we 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 like we like top players, and um, but yeah, time will tell. Yeah, no, it'd be a great signing if if it comes off. It'd be incredible, incredible signing for West Ham, and it's nice to see again. You've broke the transfer record again. It's just all credit to it is improving. I th I think we missed a trick last year, but I think you've sort of summed it up yourself, Jack. It, even your dad has sort of admitted it himself. You aim too high. I think. You reach for the stars too early. When if we would have bought the players we've bought this summer last year, I think we would have had a real steady season last year. I think it was also one of those things where last year the money went incredible, like insane, and um, and this year it has kicked on on similar progress. Like it's gone insane this year, more than last year. But I think we weren't the only team to suffer last year because. The money was mad and people weren't sure what the right price point was, mm. if that makes sense. And this summer it's kicked on again. But however, it's one of those things where if you don't pay it, and now you've had three months of realising that, if you don't pay it, then the, then the player goes or, or this happens or that happens. So it's, it's trying to get your mindset around, um, do we pay it, do we not pay it, mm. and making that decision. Um, we also had... Uh, backer last year drag on for months and months and months 
And when something like that happens is you're banking on him and you're not going to go sign someone else. And then when that falls through, mm. then you're, then you've got a big problem because you're, you're left. Uh, but yeah, no, I think this summer, I think we've done ourselves justice and I just, I just hope we can perform on the pitch because that's what we all want. Yeah, no, that's right. That's right. Um, yeah, so that's that's it sort of for transfers at the moment. I've got some really happy with most of the outs as well, in terms of um, Faguli, Nordvet. You know, it's all, all the players that they what didn't have would, the best of careers at West Ham. That's yeah, just no, to say. What what I would like to say is um, the prices you see on those, mm. they're not as accurate as what people think if that if that makes sense so um so norvide for example his wages are a lot hoffenheim will only pay a certain amount of wages mm. so therefore some of the transfer fee has to go to him to top up his wages oh, if yeah. that makes sense yeah so yeah, yeah. so on some of them well actually all of them it's not as clean cut as we got x amount like so when people say, "Oh, you've only spent X amount million net," it's actually not that. Mm. It's it's like, yeah. But, yeah, but, no, I understand. Yeah, because you do have some sites trying to add up the net spend and the yeah, terms yeah. of what we've got back. And but, yeah, but, but nonetheless, it has been great business. And and players that have not worked out that you, we've looked at for a year to then make a profit mm. is is really really good. And I think I think that's a good way of doing it. Obviously, from a business standpoint, uh, it's great that these players, you know, we've had them for a year, sold them, I made a profit of them. That's obviously good from a business standpoint. But what does that say about the transfer business last year where nearly everyone we signed is now left the club? Who's actually left? Obviously, Lanzini signed on a permanent. Fernandez. Fernandez. Yeah. Masuaku. 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 Yeah. Um, I think it says that I think they all played their part last year, and and Norvide's gone to Hoffenheim, who are a Champions League side. Mm. Um, I think sometimes their face just sometimes doesn't fit, mm. um, and I do think it does happen where possibly they could come back to haunt us. Norvide's <laughs> going to play against Liverpool on on Thursday and uh, oh, on, on tonight. Is tonight it, is, yeah, 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 yeah. Tonight. So, so I think it'll be one of those things where. It sometimes doesn't work for them. However, I think it's harsh at the same time to say they weren't good enough for us. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I quite liked Nordvart, actually. Yeah. I quite liked him. Especially yeah. players that possibly didn't get um, a huge amount of game time. Obiang's a good example. When he's his first season for us, he only kicked the ball six or seven times. Mm. And, and now, and last year, you would have said he's one of our best players. However, at the same time, it's... It's tricky to say, like, I think last year it was getting competition in the squad, trying to get some competition in the squad. And it's very difficult to get people to come and offer them first team football. But AU's still there. Mm -hmm. We've, all of our big ones are still there. It, it says that our business was OK last year, I'd say, possibly below average. But I think we all know our business was possibly slightly below average last year. Mm -hmm. No, that's... I hear a lot of pundits saying about Tottenham, actually. I mention Tottenham every week on this bloody channel. But um, they're saying they're having exactly the same problem, basically, with the mm. hack and their track signings when they, there's no way anyone's getting in that first team at the moment. Yeah, no, I think, I, to be honest, I, I don't really like Tottenham, but you've got to take your hat off to them the way, the way they've done it. Mm. Like, they seem to get players out every year for... 10 million quid here, 10 million quid there, players who's barely kicked a ball for him. It's amazing, anyone, yeah. Yeah, he's a very clever man, uh, Lee. He's a very clever man. To 50 million quid. You name me a 28-year-old for 50 million quid, it's fantastic business. When they've got Trippier, who's possibly slightly worse. I speak to my Tottenham friends, um, and well, my Tottenham, my friends that are Tottenham fans, <laughs> that, that, yeah, it's not Tottenham friends. <laughs> Tottenham <laughs> um, friends! Um... <laughs> Uh, that that watch Tottenham and, and I watch them myself when they're on Sky and I think Trippier puts in an equally good ball to walk yeah. possibly yeah. better ball he's maybe not as fast but mm. I think he's a better defender um, as well yeah yeah he's a real good defender and and I think like what they do is great but yeah you've got the same problem where you've got 
Harry Kane and, and they really need a backup because Janssen hasn't worked out for, for some reason and it's a player that I actually really quite like um, and he was fantastic in Holland um, but it's Janssen hasn't worked out but who, who's going to come as, as, as second choice it's going to be one of those things where they're going to have to pay wildly over their wages mm. to get them to even think yeah. about coming because no way they're playing over Harry Kane they play that certain system and no way they're changing it mm. Uh, last thing on last season, Jack, I just want to have your views now. It's been sort of a good six, seven months on the man, Dimmy Pyatt. I just want to hear what your opinions are and how you feel that whole saga. Because that definitely killed us last year as well. That that killed us. Well, it killed us and it didn't kill us because we did get back-to-back wins after that. So, I don't know, it could have been a blessing in disguise. However, a top, top player. Um, but if you didn't want to play for us... It's a very difficult one. And mm. and you've seen it with Diego Costa, which is, is this summer, almost the exact same scenario, where they'll only go to one team. And when they'll, when, and when they'll only go to one team, it leaves the club in a very sticky position. Mm. Because you're going to get mucked off on the prize. It's, it's inevitable. Uh, and and, you've, and it's, it's a real tricky one. Um, and you don't want a, a player that's got bad bad blood and, and doesn't want to be there mm. um, it is a real it's a real real tough one and 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 like I wish Dimitri all the best even though I wish it didn't end as sourly as it did yeah. for you um, for you I Jack how, is he, how would he be remembered in five years time I asked this question last week to Paul and we, we all said listen he's one of the best players I've ever seen in the West Ham shirt and he, mm-hmm. he will go he won't be a legend but he'd definitely go down as one of the greatest players I've ever seen playing a West Ham shirt. I think with Dimitri, it's one of those things where, like, top, top player, like, no doubt about that. But it's just a massive shame how it ended. Mm. The way I wish it ended was he went, look, my kids and family have gone back to Marseille. We all want to go back to Marseille. However, let's, I'll play until the summer, and in the summer, I'll then go. Mm. <clears throat> I don't want to be here. I'll be totally honest with you. However, I won't leave you stranded. Mm. I'll, we'll keep it all under wraps. And then in the summer, I'll go. Yeah. And I honestly don't think anyone would have... Had, we would have been upset. But at the same time, they've, they've all got lives. They've all got personal lives. <laughs> they've, all got, um, they've all got problems. And, and I think it was one of those things where... I'm not sure why it had to have such a bitter ending like it mm. did. Um, but, yeah, I think you'll be remembered as a top, top player. But I think if he had four more years with us, I don't like to splash the word legend about, but he would have been one of those players where in 10 years' time, I'd have gone, oh, Dimitri Payet. Yeah, he would have been up there with Powell, definitely. Yeah, and I, and I think but after a year, we saw how amazing he was and it was mm. just a... Just a shame we never got to see any more. Hmm. I agree. Uh, moving on, Jack. Injuries. Um, can you give us any news on sort of the time frames of the main men, Lanzini and Mikel, or when we might see them? If you, um, if I think you... Bilic in his most recent press conference, they asked him all this. It's, it's, it's all on our Facebook. Um, I forget what he said. I think Lanzini's back. Antonio is back for Southampton to play a part. Played against Everton and, and was looked sharp and looked well. I was a bit guided he didn't play against Billy Ricky and then play against United for 20 minutes. But, um, but yeah, it didn't happen that way. The physios obviously um, stepped in. Uh, but he's looking he's looking ready and, and can't wait to play. But they yeah. don't want to shove him back in because they'll do like 20 minutes, half yeah. an hour, yeah. I'd imagine. You know, as they always do. Yeah. Um, well, Lanzini, Jack, just... Yeah. Cause Stream all over social media. You probably, if Philip Coutinho goes to Barcelona, are we scared that Liverpool are going to come knocking? And what are we going to say if they do? I think it's one of those things. Like we'll worry about it when it happens. If I'm honest with you, I don't think Coutinho will go. Mm-hmm. I think it's very bold of the board to say he's not going anywhere. Although then he did hand in a transfer request. I think it'll make the board look a bit silly if they say he's not going anywhere and then and then he does go. Um, I was speaking to a football agent about it actually um, the other day, and, and he said he said he he, he thinks it's unlikely. Mm. Um, 
but not his agent, I'd like to emphasise. <laughs> uh, um, but if it does happen, it does happen. But I think with such a short period of time left and uh, on the clock, it's it's very, very hard. Lanzini and, uh, well, Manu's very happy where he is. Mm. And uh, he's a top player and a top professional. And and I think unless we get a ridiculous offer in this day and age, you think when Gilfie Sigurdsson, and a 29-year-old and a good, good player, I'd like for 50. Like that. but yeah. when he's going for 45, 50 million quid, and and God knows how much a, how much a um a week, you have got to think like how much how much do you take for yeah. for a twenty three? Yeah, we we, we was discussing this every now. week. How much would you take for Lanzini? And it's like in this inflated market, I, I wouldn't even like to put a figure on it. I wouldn't know. Mm. I think the thing is as well, like I'd, I'd, I don't I'd, I don't know about Cortina whether he'll go or not. But I think the thing is, first of all, obviously. We don't know the man. We don't know what goes on behind the scenes. But to me, Lanzini's shown no signs of being unhappy. He seems happy to be at the club. It seems like he's he likes playing for West Ham. And I have to say, from a Liverpool perspective, don't like for Lanzini. I rate Lanzini probably higher than most people. I've said from when we started this channel, I think Lanzini one day will be right at the top. I think he will go all the way. I think he's an incredible player, but. Looking from Liverpool's perspective, if they sold Coutinho for hundred million pound, and then they sign Lanzini to replace him, if I was a Liverpool fan, I won't be happy with that. I don't think Lanzini yet is that marquee player that they would look at as a replacement for Coutinho. Do you know what I mean? I would be going out and getting Christian Eriksen or something yeah, like that. I mean, if I was, if I was um, Liverpool, I'd actually go get a Bamiyan. Mm. And I'd move Firmino back into Coutinho's role. That's yeah, it. exactly. A good shot. couple of my That's Liverpool supporting friends what I would do. said That's exactly it, that. It, because I think they struggle for a real centre forward. Firmino mm. does it. Origi does it. Origi is that centre forward, but he's not. He's a very, very good player, and I like Origi. He's very versatile, but he's not that twenty-five goal a season striker. Mm. And and I'd move Firmino back into where he played at Hoffenheim, mm -hmm. and I'd go and get um, a Bamiyang. A Bamiyang and Klopp obviously have a history as well, but that's personally what I would do. And I, I think you'd see a, a better. I don't think there's a a replacement out there that's identical to Coutinho. And and when and when you watched uh, Spurs try and replace Bale with with like fifty different players, it, it just doesn't work. So. Mm. I think unless there's a like-for-like -like replacement, then you may as well look to strengthen other positions. I think Van Dijk they're also looking at quite heavily as well. Yeah, 70 million as be well. It'll be interesting <laughs> to see if that happens because obviously all the stuff earlier on in the window about tapping up and all the rest of it, I don't think he'll go to Liverpool because of that. I reckon if he did end up going to Liverpool, there'd be too much trouble from it. Um, but it'd be interesting yeah. to see what happens there. Yeah. I, to be honest, I think my gut tells me he will go. Hmm. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I just think I don't think there'll be too much trouble. I think Southampton know that Liverpool um, have been tapping him up for ages. I just it's, it uh, tapping up it shouldn't happen, but and everyone to go about it the right way. But it does. Oh yeah, it's sad. But I just think I just think it's I just think he'll want to go desperately as well. Mm. See, it is his big chance at the big time. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that moves us on quite nicely to the Southampton game as a little bit of a preview, we could say. Um, yeah, it's, they're a funny team against us. We seem to beat them at their ground and they sort of seem to tuck us in at our ground. Um, good result last year. 3-1 win. Uh, goals from Gabby Adini and obviously we got a great goal from Andy Carroll, I remember. Um, what do you think, Jack, this weekend? I, I think we can. I think we can get a result up there. Yeah, well, well I remember. <laughs> I remember watching. Um, I remember watching Van Dyke at uh, at the London Stadium and thinking, "Wow, what a fantastic, fantastic player he was! Like, what a beast! Won everything in the air." And Font was obviously his partner then as mm. well. But um, both of them probably won't be. Well, Font will not be playing for them, and uh, and Van Dyke um, has a virus, so. Uh, so um, he won't be playing. Virus in inverted commas, probably, but 
with yeah. that virus still. So yeah, um, we will see Yoshino and Stevens, yeah. I think it is. Yeah, so so I think uh, they've obviously signed um, the boy from Juventus, and and they are a good outfit. But I think if we've got any real aspirations to do well this year, I think I think we've got to go there with all guns blazing and, mm. and hope to get the three points. I read a stat. Um, uh, sorry, I was going to say I read a stat. Uh, yesterday, I think it was that apparently they haven't won a home game in in something stupid. It's been like five hundred odd minutes of football since they've won. Yeah, yeah. scored a goal as well. I think it's something that they ain't scored a goal as well. Mm. Yeah, someone someone else told me that as well. Uh, to be honest, I don't understand why they got rid of their manager last year. I thought he did quite a good job, um, but everyone said it was very boring football. But I don't know. I think I think it's it's difficult. Um, uh, uh, the Southampton job because a lot of their players have, have gone and, and they have recruited well like let's not kid ourselves and they are still a very very good side hmm. but I would hope we could go and get oh, I'd, I'd take a point but I would also see ourselves for three um, hmm. but if we lost as well it wouldn't be unheard of either so it's one of those where you never really know what's going to happen hmm. but I think if we can send on Antonio with half an hour to go and and a few others like that, I, I think we've got um, we got we should be optimistic about it. Mm. Yeah, you got to be thinking as well. Southampton are, are going to be one of the teams around us. Like me and Paul predicted, we'd, we'd like West Ham eighth would be a fantastic season for us. Obviously, that's where Southampton finished their self. Um, yeah, what what would be your ideal finish for us this year? What Obviously first, but yeah. Sort of realistically, what what would be Um, a successful season for for yourself? I'm not saying your dad's words for yourself. Yeah. Um. Personally, I'd love a cup run. I'd love to go to Wembley. Uh, I think we will. Uh, December thirtieth. Yes. 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 (laughs) At least we'll be there once this year. Yeah. Uh, Um. But no, I think I think it's it's important um, that we have a good cup run. We've been out, we've had really 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 bad cup draws. We've been saying like Chelsea, um, who we beat. Then we had Man United last year, didn't we? Mm-hmm. And, and we've had Man City, and it just seems to be like one horrendous team after another. And I do think eventually it should break for us. Hopefully, yeah. this is the year. And that last been, season at Upton Park. We, yeah. we did come really close as well. It was just that, so close. that moody goal, Martial, in the last minute. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. he actually fouled the goalkeeper as well, Denise Schweinsteiger, if yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Ran in. yeah, he did. Yeah, like we were so close that year as well to get into semi final. Even the semi final, semi final would be nice just to go to Wembley again, like yeah, you say. I think, I think, but in the league wise, I think it would also be nice if, yeah, eighth would be fantastic. Um, I think anything under than under ten, I'll be honest. I think we've underperformed. Mm. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would agree. It's tough though now because we tried to put together a league table last week, and it's like after seventh, and I'm saying Everton have finished in seventh in this mm-hmm. table. You've got Leicester. You've got. I West think we could beat Everton. I really do. I, I'm not sure why. I just I, think they. they what, if what, Rooney plays up front for them, I, I just think personally, I think. He's not Lukaku. I, I don't know. I think they bought well, but I think that's the one position that they're lacking. Scored at the weekend. Yeah, he, he did score at the weekend. And to be fair, maybe I'll eat my words. Maybe they've got the <laughs> super fit. But they're just a good team, though. I do like the way they play football. Everton, very good manager as well. Very I think he's good. A top top manager. Top top yeah. manager. Mm. Um, but I, I, I think we should be in and around Everton. I, mm. I don't think they're miles and miles and miles better than us. If I'm honest. Yeah. Um. But I was looking at the other teams, and when I look at other teams on paper, and I look at us on paper, and, and paper can be very deceiving. Um, like with the England team, everyone thinks we should do better than what we do. But mm. I do think we should be really, really pushing for it. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. I think in every position this year as well, we are. We what we didn't do last year, but what we did this year is we needed a right back. We went and signed a right back. We needed a striker. We went and signed a striker. When you see teams like Leicester, they've spent 25 million quid on um, Ian Acho, who I love, um, but he was he's on the bench, and mm. I just was think we, how he... was we in for him, Jack? Yeah, Ian Acho. Yeah. Was we in for him? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah massively, yeah. But and was it that Slav didn't want him here? <laughs> oh, no comment. <laughs> well, he would have been a fantastic signing. We, we've discussed it. We've said, but if you would have had on the table Hernandez or Ianacho, I definitely would have gone Hernandez. Yeah, well, I think we were lucky to get Hernandez. Like, mm. Hernandez came up later on and it, it was in and around, but we thought it was a long shot. And then um, that, we, that we pulled it off is, yeah, obviously fantastic, yeah. I would I would agree with you. I think Hernandez short term is is um is uh it fills a massive, massive hole. Um and and I think when I look at him he's such a fantastic player, his movement, his passing, mm. his goals. And yeah. I I didn't realise how, how just sometimes you see players like that, it's just he's like a natural poacher mm. and he just gets in the box and scores but his build-up play is much better than what I thought. And Man United, yeah. he's just an, you can just watch him in pre-season as well. He's just a really, really intelligent footballer. Mm. Yeah, and, I think um, it's a bit of a mix between Michael Owen and Teddy Sheringham. That's, I think, yeah. that's something that I pointed out on this show, I think, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, a lot of people don't realise he's got such good vision. He's got a real mm-hmm. eye for a pass. He's, yeah, he's yeah. Got, he reads the game so well. And uh, I do think that's a big underappreciated part of his game. Yeah, no, no, massively. I, I almost. This is going to sound crazy. You can put this as the, uh, as the headline. But I think uh, Andy Carroll's got a great pass passing ratio. Uh, pass it. I think he can smash a ball as well. And and mm. and I think it is weird, but no, I hundred percent agree. I think he's a lot more to Hernandez than just a goal scorer. Mm. Um, and he's possibly not seen by Ian Acho. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I, in a way, I hope I don't see Ian Acho too much this year. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's weird with Leicester because I feel like they've signed in positions they've already got and they've mm. already got good backup in. Um, but I'm not the manager, and and I may eat my words, but. But yeah, no, I th- I think we've got a very balanced squad and a very strong squad, and and mm. I think it's something where we, that we should be proud of, and and something that we've got good backup in every single position yeah. and and good first choice in every single position, mm. and uh, other teams can't always say that, but mm. I think it's something we've got to be positive about, and uh, and I'm still looking forward to the season, even after Saturday's result. Yeah. What I was saying saying about. Uh, good backup in every position that's true obviously we've got a few injuries at the moment but I did notice that the weekend we had five defenders and a goalkeeper on the bench yeah no that was true as well we which was a bit three, worrying to be honest yeah, with three centre-halves um, but I think it shows that Declan Rice can play in midfield mm. um, importantly I think it's rare that you have Lanzini and Kriate out as well mm. so they're similar position um, but yeah no I think you've got yeah it, no, I can I can see that as well, but I think the only thing with that is is time will tell. Like when yeah. when we're Christmas and we've got an injury list of ten and we can barely fill the team, <laughs> I think I think that's when we worry. But at the moment, yeah. it looks that we've got decent backup in every position. Yeah. Right, yeah. So Jack, one of the things we called for was us being able to go to like Premier League teams and take their best players. And I think, barring Shakiri, we've actually done that with Stoke with an out of it. We've not discussed him much today. So I just want some points on what you see, what your dad see, or what Slav see in an out of it and why he was brought in, really. Yeah, no, this was one that Slav was, was uh, he really, really fancied him. And um, and I think you look on out of it, he's very determined, um, arrogant, but I'd say in a good way. I'd say mm. it's one of those positions where you can be arrogant and get away with it a little bit. You look at Ronaldo, who's like probably got a lovely like, pass on him as well. Yeah, yeah, and and I think he he scores goals, which is important, and he's very direct. and And I hate nothing worse than watching a winger dribble to the byline, not even the byline, but getting past his man by like one step over and just whacking a hopeless ball into the middle. <laughs> Matt Jarvis. <laughs> Matt Jarvis. <laughs> I didn't say it. Um, <laughs> no, you didn't say it. You didn't say it. <laughs> I think, I think, um, I think with Arnautovic, you see the best of both, and and I think when he's running at a defender, defender's not sure what way he's going, mm. um, and I think he can either cut inside and smash a ball in, or also run down the, uh, run down the wing. I think he's he's could be could be a really really good player for us, and really important player for us. 
I think him and, and Antonio is quite yeah. frightening. Like they're big yeah, guys yeah. as well. They're hard to get off the ball. Big big guys. Yeah, he's he's six foot two, I think, on Alvich and and Bill. And when on Alvich came first from Stoke, I actually put him forward to the boss and said, "This is someone we should look at." Before he went to Stoke, um, and and obviously he's done really well in the Premier League, and and we've we've got him uh, eventually, and. He's big, big money, but hopefully the money will um, will pay off and, mm. and and time will tell. And, and as my dad said, look, I think this strategy, what we're doing at the moment, is not the most sustainable. But I think you need a bit of skill, you need a bit of um, Premier League proven. Well, you need to of, keep up, don't you? You need to yeah. keep up or you're going to be left behind. Yeah, mm. yeah no, and I think, I think we've, we've done the mix because we've signed um, the 18-year-old as well uh, in Montenegro International. I forget his name. Sabanovic. Sabanovic or something. Yeah. Sabanovic or something like that, yeah. <laughs> will, will we and see much of him? Do, uh, is Slav got him in his plans or is he sort of under 23 this year? I, 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 I hope we see some of him. I'm, I was a bit disappointed he didn't make it on the bench on Saturday, to be honest. Mm. He's someone that I want to see something of. Like, I think he could be anything. I hope we see him against Cheltenham. If we don't see him against Cheltenham, I'll be really, really disappointed. Mm. Um, I think... He trained really well, um, or he has trained really well since he's come in. And it's important to remember, he's only 18. Yeah. Um, so I think if he gets game time this year, I think it would be really good for him and for us. Um, yeah. And he looks like a lively character, and and I think uh, he could be a really, really interesting one. Um, yeah. I hope we do see him. I, I think he looks, he looks really, really exciting, but... But only time will tell. You've got Domingos Quinner as well, a year older. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, forgot so, about <laughs> Yeah, so so they'll so they'll be sadly he was injured, so he didn't get to play much pre season. But but I just hope he, against teams like Cheltenham we can we can see a few players like that and and see if they'll mm. and just at least get a chance. To have a look yeah, at that's it. if we look at the League Cup last year, like, that's where Fernandez sort of announced himself as well with a go against Chelsea. So it's a good chance for these young boys to have a go, definitely. Um, okay, yep. Yeah. So yeah, that's it for sort of summing up, guys. For everything we can talk about, um, Jack, on our mate, uh, what have you been up to, mate, since uh, the last time we had you on? Obviously, you've took the ladies over. Uh, what have you been up to? Yeah, so obviously I did my apprenticeship uh, at West Ham since since I last been on, and and that was really successful. I, I got to have. Uh, a real like idea of every single department at the club, um, and I know everyone now a lot better than what I did, um, and I know a lot more about the football club um, better than what I did as well. And, and it's it is a really really interesting business and, and a crazy business as well. Um, obviously, all led by team performance and and everything like that. But but there is so much more than someone just turns a key on a Saturday and. And let sixty thousand people in. Like it is nuts when you're there. Um, but in more recent times, I've oh, oh my voice. <coughs> in more recent times, yeah, as you said, um, I've taken over the ladies, uh, and I've got a team of team of four full time staff just working on the ladies, and then we've got obviously all the media department. Um, and a, and a few other people that help us as well. Hmm. Um, I've been speaking to a lot of our our um, partners and, and things like that, trying to get a few over the line and and everything like that. And it's it's been all about trying to get some money for for the ladies team and and to try and make them as successful as possible. And I think it's a great way for for me to um, learn your trade. Yeah, learn, yeah. Learn, learn the trade of, of on a much on a much smaller scale, but at the same time, do everything and still meet everyone and 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 really make the ladies' project my own. I think when I was doing the apprenticeship, the biggest thing for me was I couldn't really get my teeth stuck into anything. But I think with this, and hopefully, um, hopefully it will. Uh, all the hard work will pay off. But yeah. what I'd like to say is it's not just me working hard on the ladies. Like you've got Greg, um, who's the, who's the manager. You've got Josh, who's the assistant manager. You've got Cam Ray, who's general manager, which is like, she does all the books and, and helps me if I need 
uh, any invoices sent out or anything like that. But I've got the hard, most hard-working team I've I could have asked for, and, and they all work till past midnight on um, on everything, mm. Uh, mm. which is which is great. Um, and I think that's what's really important. And hopefully, their hard work and and my hard work and and everyone's hard work. We've we've got enough money. We've we've got the team. We hope if we can add a few more. Um, and and that's been a real challenge is, is trying to get players in in for the ladies team. It's mm. it's a completely different ball game to the men's. Um, but we think we've got the team. We think we've got the right stadiums. We think we've got everything nailed down to the best it can be. We're now training at Rush Green, which is the first team training ground. We're playing our first four games at Rush Green and then moving over to the community track opposite the Olympic Stadium. People mm. were... People get tickets for them, Jack, if they want yeah, to go Yeah, no, um, it's, it's going out today, actually, and, and once we finish this, I'll retweet it and everything. But it's going to be free for season ticket holders, free for Claret members, and £1 for anyone else. Um, and I just think it's so, so, so important that that we get as many people down there as possible and as many people supporting as possible. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's great to see. I mean, it's obviously... The, w- the women are putting the men to shame at the minute. Yeah, <laughs> Semi-final it's... of the Europe, Europe, European uh, Cricket World Cup champions that they're putting men to shame. It's, it's, so, yeah. it's so good to see. And like, obviously, it's great to see women getting more, more and more involved in the game. And obviously, it's great now that, obviously, West Ham as a club is has more of a hand in the ladies team to, to help push on and yourself, obviously, taking over. And it's really good to see, like you say, hopefully that does bring in a whole new sort of community to, to the club as well. Yeah, no, I, I think the biggest thing is is it's firstly great for the community and great to get girls involved in the sport. And, and it's a great, great angle to get everyone involved. It's also one of those things where when the men are so busy and so focused on a Saturday game, like our women are, but our women, we they're a bit more flexible. So where we go and open a school, for example... Mm. We can take one of the girls' players with us, and and it's still got that same state and that stature, and it's it's really really great to be part of a project where there is a real long term aim and a real community, great mm. great feel. And it's one of those things where my biggest thing this year was firstly was to get the money in, which I've done, and secondly to get attendance, which mm. only time will tell on. But I think the most important thing is how we try and drive people to those games because mm. it's so important that that we try and get people to those games um, just to bring... I was so surprised when I went to my first women's game how good the level of football was. Um, and I think it's I think it's important that we, we try and push as many people there as possible. Mm. And, and I think the ladies, are, they've said it's been the best pre-season they've ever had. They've never felt more included in the club and and I think it's this is just the start and I think that's the most important thing and the team is there um and what and league what league are you in actually what, what league are you in we're in we're in the FA Premier League oh you are in the Premier League oh, no no we're in the FA Premier League so there's WSL 1 WSL 2 and then the FA Premier League oh cool so cool. we are in the third division but we hope that we can really push for promotion this year Mm. And uh, either this year or next, we we go up into WSL, mm. which would be um, which would be fantastic. Uh, obviously, the Twitter following is really important with Facebook following and trying to boost all that. And and I just I think this could be the start of something really really special. And I just want and everyone to get behind it. What we're going to try and do is try and overlap home team games with our games and try and send people from one stadium to the other. Hmm. And um, Samuelson's just scored, so we're only up against Swindon, if anyone cared. Just come <laughs> up on my Twitter. Um, but but I think I think that's the um, that's the most important thing. Yeah, no, uh, it's really good for you as well, Jack. Like you say, great experience for you. Like if you are, I assume your ambitions are to take West Ham on mm-hmm. eventually. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. So to get that, Especially so young, what you you're still only about nineteen, aren't you? Eighteen, nineteen? Yeah, I'm I'm seventeen actually. Oh, seventeen, yeah. Even. So, yeah. So to get this sort of experience, like hopefully you're not taking over the club for a few years. You know, hopefully your dad's got a few years left of running the club. But when you yeah, do, yeah. you're going to be a real good 
period and real good knowledge, hopefully, of what the, what the dark side and the good side of football is. Yeah, no, I, I think that's why we, we first did the apprenticeship and uh, at the football club and, and going around every department and everything like that. And I think that was really, really eye-opening. And, and now with the ladies, it, it's, uh, it's like... His dad said it was a good way of doing it. He said it was... You're doing everything that the West Ham do, but just at a much smaller scale. Mm. And obviously West Ham is like hundreds of millions of pounds. Um, but, but yeah, it's, 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 it's been great. And I just hope, um, I hope we can, we can start the season well against Gillingham on Sunday and, and our first game with Cardiff on the 27th, uh, at Rush Green. And, and I just, I hope pre-season's been good. We beat Millwall on Sunday and I just, I just hope we can do well this year, but, but only time will tell. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's great. Good luck with it, mate. Good luck with yeah, it. Good luck with it, mate. it goes well. Yeah. It, like you say, it's great to get the women's football out there and we wish you all the luck. Um, got a few questions before we go, Jack. Nothing too serious, just some funny ones and a couple of ones from the fans on Twitter just to get your feedback. A um, couple of either ors. Um, fourth or the FA Cup this season? See, this is a really, really hard one for me. I'd take fourth. I, I always say We fourth. all agree with that. Last week we did the same question. We agreed. Yeah. I just... I, 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 Listen, I think people would prefer to win the FA Cup, but fourth for me, I think it'd be such an adventure mm. to, to go to all those. Um, maybe third, actually, because third you go automatically, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, you want to automatic, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, but I think that would be, it would be a great adventure for everyone. Imagine a few European tour, mm. a few European nights. At, to see at Barca, to see like Real. Barca, yeah. Yeah. And I, right. I think that, so fourth for me. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether you're aware of any of it, but someone sent you a question: KSI or the Sidemen? <laughs> I, I've actually, I've actually been watching this a little bit. Um, Ethan, who is, who it's all kicked off over, is a West yeah. Ham fan. Yeah, so Ethan, if you're watching, come on this show. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think I think we're going to have to back Ethan. Do you know what? Yeah. I, I'm the same. I've been watching them. It's, it's some of the best stuff I've seen in YouTube for oh, years. It has been funny. It has been funny. Some Harry's a very there. funny man. Harry, <laughs> Harry went in. And I'll tell you what, everyone everyone was saying about Simon, who done the latest one. He went in on uh, Deji. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, man, I'll tell you what, he can actually rap. Yeah, no. He's got so, a good to flow. To be fair, some of them, considering they're like YouTube stars, they've actually come up with the lyrics done the beat done everything in like 24 hours and yeah. they're actually not bad either which is <laughs> the, it doesn't know what it says about the other rappers but yeah no obviously KSI is trying to launch his rap career but but yeah no <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> uh, but um but yeah no it's, it has been it has been good uh good to watch I have to say I'll give him that yeah uh last Evil uh Mayweather or McGregor Ooh. um I think Mayweather will win, but I'd prefer McGregor one, you know, just, just, yeah, I'd love to see McGregor the win. whole thing. Yeah, okay. Uh, Gary says, uh, Jack, who is the most famous person you've ever met? Oh, it's a tough one. Um, James Corden, obviously, I've met, yeah. and he's become it's very more famous more now, famous. yeah. Yeah, yeah he's more and more famous. Um, so, yeah, possibly James Corden. Who's the most famous person you've ever met, Luke? I don't know, mate. Shadow from Gladiators? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, Starstruck-wise, I'd have to say it's probably someone like Jeff Erst. Because mm. like, that is a proper, like, wow. You're like, Can you imagine a guy scoring a hat-trick in a World Cup final now? You would get nowhere near them. No. Nah. Nah. But Jeff is such a real approachable, nice guy. I, I, I met Britney Spears back when she was on the top of her game. Yeah. And uh, I've... she asked me out. No, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I met Mariah Carey as well. She's quite. Oh. Cool. Well, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, probably maybe not for the generation now, but for our generation, absolutely, yeah. she's massive. I'm a, I'm a big Mariah Carey fan. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, probably shouldn't be admitting it, but but I am, and and yeah, so I met her. That that was good as well. Yeah. Uh, Dave, what is the best goal you've ever seen scored against us and for us? So, against us, thinking about it just off the top of my head, was Rooney's goal at Upton Park. Halfway, lot job, yeah. Um, 
best for us. Probably either Andy Carroll's overhead kick last year or um, Dimitri Pyatt against Middlesbrough. Mm. I think it was Middlesbrough. It took the old team on. It was just such, both of them were such important goals as well, mm. which may be why, why they um, why they stick in my mind. But Ravel also scored an absolute screamer against Tottenham. Uh, probably a few others that I've forgotten as well. But, but yeah, those, those are the ones that come to mind. Yeah, Simon says, um, what would your dream realistic signing be? Simon says. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. My dream realistic signing I would have been Ian Acho, I can't say. Mm-hmm. Controversial. Yeah. <laughs> I quite like Neymar. I think your, your dad should just go bomb That's 200 million on Neymar. Realistic, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you, said, you said realistic, so I was, <laughs> uh, maybe Neymar is, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, we asked you this last time, Jack, you was on actually, and you did answer it. Um, what is your first 11 now? Um, I think it's a real tough one between Hart and Adrian, I have to say. I think both have different aspects of their game. Yeah. Um, my gut would start with Adrian. Oh, wow. That's, that's interesting. Which is, which is controversial, but, mm. you know. Um, but, yeah, my, that's what my gut would say. I just think Adrian's such a phenomenal shot stopper. Mm, he is. Um, one of the best shot stoppers I think I've ever seen. Like, some of the stuff he says. Like, there'll be at least once a game, you'll go, um, you'll go wow, like, how has he stopped that? Mm. Um, the Tottenham game, he was phenomenal. That yeah. Tottenham won your win. Yeah, some so, of the saves um, he pulled off. So, Adrian starts in goal, which is controversial straight off the bat. Um, then we go with Masuaku, which is again possibly controversial. Yeah, uh, we, yeah. We, we we both, me and Luke, both agreed with that when we did our teams last week. Yeah, but I think I think it's a tricky one. I think it depends what game you're playing because mm. West World brings a completely different side. Maybe if you are playing against Man United, it's probably not the worst thing in the world to play West World because he knows the English game. He's he's very very good at defending. Um, and, and can also put in a good I'd quite point. like to see uh, Masuaku play left wing I was I yeah, say, so I've, go. I've actually said this I think there is possibly a chance where if we play a Man City or someone like that you possibly play them Cresswell Masuaku mm. on the left and just to really shut up shop I think um, the, the, more I, the more I see him play the more he looks to me like a winger rather than a defender he yeah. just has that look about him and he loves to take he, a player on yeah. he loves a trick he mugged well, Walker off, didn't he, in the pre-season yeah, friendly? Yeah. Well, I think his, his pace is, and his power as well is another one. He's just mm. such an athlete. I remember when we played um, Dom Zale, this was last year, so I was just completely digressing, but um, their chairman went, some of your players are not human because you've got Antonio, who looks like an absolute beast. You've got Giotto, <laughs> who's six foot four and an absolute beast as well. You've got Masuaku and you've got all others, but yeah. Um, and then two centre halves, Reed and Ogbonna. Mm-hmm. Um, but two two great backups as well, and, and two I think in different scenarios could fit in. Yeah, I love Ginger. I do love then Ginger. Then you've got I think Zabaleta just nicks it. I watched him against Man United, and I thought he's such a great great yeah. player, and I think he will just improve. Uh, I think he's he's never been the fastest, and I think he knows he's not the fastest. Um, so therefore he plays that to his advantage he reads the game better so mm. he's not caught out too much um, and he's an absolute warrior as well which I love um, and then you've got um, Kuyate and Obiang Obiang sitting Kuyate a bit more you know up and down uh, then you've got Lanzini just, in, just ahead of him um, I think then you've got Antonio and Arnautovic on the wings, um, and then Hernandez up front. Yeah, it's it's hard. Like you've left that Ayu there, you've left Noble out there. It, it was very hard to do that. Um, who's your captain then? If uh, if there's no Mark starting, who would your captain be? Um, Reed. Yeah, I, I say Reed every week. I'm a big fan of Winston. Well, Reed, Reed is vice captain, so I think mm. he would only go to 
to read. I think there's a possibility of next year, if Noble doesn't play, um, then Zabaleta, if he's still playing for us and, and still fit and fine for his position. Because he was, he was Man City's captain. and mm. Also got jo- uh, Joe Hart, but Joe Hart's not playing. But Joe Hart's a, another leader. I think we've got lots of leaders. I think It's um, what we've needed as well. It is what we've needed. Um, yeah, Paul yeah. says every week about Kevin Nolan. Say what you want about his plan ability towards the end. He was a fantastic leader and captain. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think with Kevin Nolan it was it was a difficult one. I think um, towards the end, I think he still had a role for us, but but it was it was a very different role. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think when his goals dried up a little bit, he, he, he struggled. But yeah. Um, I mean, like, Lucas like, Neil was fantastic as well. Lucas Neil was a fantastic captain as well. Mm-hmm. But Nolan, Nolan was a top top player for us. Like, let's not kid ourselves. Oh, he was. He without, was. without him in the championship, I think we would have yeah. struggled. And uh, he was but, a great yeah. player for us. And yeah, towards the end, his legs went a bit, and like you say, the goals started drying up. Um, but I never held that against him. I know he got a lot of stick from no, a lot of fans. I think, but I think that I was think unfair. That, he was yeah, a fantastic think, captain and a great servant for the club. I think the hardest thing for that is, and if I was a footballer, I think that's this is what I'd find the hardest, is when you're not as good as you were and, and you, the, your age just catches up with you. And it, it happens to everyone yes. at different times, admittedly, but it does happen to everyone. You listen, I think Gary Neville's done an interview about it saying when he was at Man United and towards the end, he just said to Sir Alex, look, I'm not up to this anymore. Mm-hmm. And it takes a very, very strong... Um, mentality and, and personality to say that, mm. um, but but yeah, no, I think it is one of those things where it happens to everyone, and I think it's very struggle. It's very hard to to blame him for that. Mm. Yeah. Got two more, Jack. Um, sorry, three more. Adam Leverborn, um, do you think we need another centre back, Jack, or do you th- or are you happy with what we've got? Well, people say to me. Why are the youth not coming through? Yeah? If we buy another centre half and Oxford plays every year at Munch and Gladback and Declan Rice starts to play for, for us. And Burke. And Burke, yeah, you've got Burke as well. Um Where 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 are they all gonna fit in? Mm. So I think it's very hard, like I think it'll be It'll be interesting to see if if by the end of the summer, next summer, I mean, that things have gone differently than, than possibly. However, at the moment, I would say it's important that um, we don't just to see the development of Oxford and yeah. Burke and, and um, Rice. Mm. Yep. Two more. Um Lockhart, are we still looking into safe standing? That's like the last serious question. Yeah, I think we've um, we put in a uh, we filled everything in for it. I remember them talking about something recently. Um, we filled everything in, so we are as soon as the Premier League or whoever say we're allowed to do it. I think we are ready to um, to do it. Uh, it's, it's something that I think most Premier League clubs are, are happy to go and do. But it's I was speaking to the club lawyer about it and he just said, look, it is a real, real tough one because it's really the FA that have to pass it, I think. Hmm. Um, and and I think I think that's where the, where the problem lies. Yeah. Uh, last question, Jack. Um, a guy called Canning Tan Len asks, are you aware of him on Twitter? And if so, do you enjoy his videos? I am, and <laughs> I do. Some of them. Yeah. Some I of think them he's a very funny guy. Like, he's got to be a big, big channel funny. as well. Yeah, no, they yeah. they are. No, he's very funny actually. I, my favourite question that you got was um, was the Pete Dunham one. Is it Pete Dunham from Green Street? Oh yeah, sorry, I, I did miss that one. Actually, yeah, I will put that in. Um, when are we going to have a? What was it? A minute silence for Pete yeah. Dunham from yeah. Green Street. <laughs> Which, which I actually thought was a fantastic question, whoever came up with it. That's and, SB, no, and, one of the guys who loves asking questions. Yeah. And no, no, and I've got to say, I applaud him for his creative. That's what I always think. Like, if someone's creative on Twitter, 
instead of just announce this, announce that, I, I've got to take my hat off to them. <laughs> at least they've put more effort into it. You're more likely to spot it as well. You're more likely to spot it as you're zipping yeah, through yeah. your tweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that is it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, big thank you to Jack and a good luck with the ladies. Team, thank mate. Um, let's hope we can hit two two thousand subscribers as well. It'd be really, really nice. It's our birthday on Thursday officially, which will be two years old for the channel. But a big, big thank you again to Paul and to Jack. Um, yeah, thanks for coming, Jack. Yeah, thanks no very much, mate. Anytime. Yeah, yeah. You might be the first person to come on three times. <laughs> I think I had trick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Until next week, guys. Come on, you eyes. Keep believing. Let's get a win against the Saints. Let's go. Cheers.